I can't fucking relax. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, Sarah, you have to calm down. And the only way you're going to do that is to breathe, yeah? Okay, breathe. Slowly. Just keep breathing. What the fuck am I? I can't. Uh, I can't die. I can't fucking breathe. The Descent is a 2005 horror thriller that's written and directed by Neil Marshall. So The Descent was last week's patron pro winner. It won by the thinnest margin that I've seen yet. I think it got 7 votes and The Wicker Man got 6 votes. So obviously I was like, there's no way I can let a film with that much enthusiasm not get reviewed. So I'm also going to be reviewing The Wicker Man tomorrow night, so stay tuned for that. And this is what next week's poll looks like, so if this is something that interests you, if this is something that you would like to vote on and empower your voice on the channel, please consider becoming a $1 patron. It would mean a lot to me. So The Descent is a film that I've known about since I was like in 4th or 5th grade. I remember seeing the trailers for this on TV and just thinking to myself, yeah, my parents are not going to let me see this. Let me just go ahead and bury that to the back of my mind. So fast forward to 2020. This film has gained quite the following. Um, this is in a lot of people's like top 15, top 20 favorite horror films ever made. And um, most people that I talk to, like they really, really enjoy this film. They say it has a lot to offer. And um, so me going into this, I'm obviously going to have like a positive attitude. And just know I didn't go into this expecting like a real brainy horror, like a real clever type of horror film. I didn't go into this expecting some sort of horror like Hereditary or something like that. But I did expect something that I was going to be invested in. So here's the thing, guys. I actually didn't really enjoy this film that much. That being said, if you go into this film just wanting to see a group of people just get killed off without you really caring about them or anything, and you just want to see really well shot and uh, really well paced and suspenseful uh, horror action and, and horror violence... This, I think you will enjoy this film because I think it offers a lot in that department. But in terms of me actually giving a shit about any of these characters and even finding some of the story believable, um, it just really didn't do it for me. And for me personally, it really dragged the film down quite a bit because I really couldn't enjoy most of it because of that. But before I really start negging this movie and uh, start criticizing it, there are things about this film that I did find quite impressive and that I did enjoy. First and foremost, I think that the aesthetics of the actual cavern and the actual cave in this film was actually really well lit and really well shot. Um, you know, the first act, you know, before any of that is kind of a different story. But when they're actually in this really dark cave where, you know, you kind of have to use your imagination on the sense of space because it's just really dark. You don't really have this comfortable sense of space, which I think worked in the sense that um, it, became, it becomes really psychologically disorienting and really thrilling in that aspect because, again, you're not really comfortable with your surroundings. But beyond that, like, I just think it's a really well-lit film, really well shot, and... And for the most part, I think the aesthetic approach really works in terms of, again, all of the horror action that happens in this dark cave setting. The special effects in this film are actually really impressive as well. There's nothing in this film that comes off fake. You genuinely believe that there are these cave-dwelling monsters throughout the film. Nothing about it seems farce. And um, when it comes to just like the bloody, gory stuff, like again, I think it's really well done and... If you're looking for just that kind of stuff, and if you're just going to be satisfied in that department, I think that this film uh, does an incredible job with that stuff. Because I was actually impressed um, from a film that came out in 2005. Usually a lot of films in the early 2000s uh, had this over-reliance on CGI when it comes to horror. This doesn't. Um, at least if there were CGI, it was kind of hard to tell if it was CGI. Because most of it um, looked practical, and it looked like they utilized a lot of prop work in order to actually make this come to life. So when it comes to that aspect, I think it was really well done. And one other thing that I thought like I have to give some sort of kudos for is that they do try to establish something with the main character. 
they kind of go down this road of how uh, she she's struggling with trauma and how she kind of has this uh, really traumatic past with her family and, and a child. And they at least try to do something like that. And they do um, try to make you care for her character in a way. And I at least have to give them some points for trying, even though if I don't think it was well fleshed out or if, it, if I really felt invested in a character, um, I think the attempts... Um, are at least praiseworthy enough because there are some kind of artsy shots in this film that have to do with her traumatic past. And I think that the way they were uh, incorporated into this film were, you know, they were, they were effective overall. It's just, I don't think it was really fleshed out enough, but I'll get into that later. And one last thing that I actually did somewhat enjoy about this film was the ending because even though the ending isn't the most unpredictable, even though it is kind of cliche. Um, I think it does a good job at kind of tricking you. Because um, when the ending actually occurred, I was kind of caught off guard, even though I thought like I should have seen it coming. And again, like the way they kind of incorporate the, the, the more artistic shots in the ending, I thought was well done. And honestly, the third act of this film as a whole is the most impressive act in my opinion. Even with all of those positive aspects of the film, it was really really difficult for me to really enjoy a lot of those things because again none of these characters felt real or authentic and a lot of them just felt like necessary cardboard cutouts because it's like the writer and the director neil marshall was kind of like okay we need to have this kind of spontaneous character okay we need to have this character that is really stupid and makes a, a really harsh mistake that ends up sabotaging the entire group. Okay, yeah, we gotta have that character. And then we need the more cautious and safe character to kind of put the spontaneous one in check. And then we need some other character that almost has like no personality to it, so let's just have that character so she can get killed off eventually. And none of these characters felt relatable, none of them really felt likable, and I just couldn't really invest myself in any of this. The only character that you know, I somewhat slightly cared about was the main character because that was the only one that they put any, like, actual depth or substance into. But the thing is, like, she kind of gets lost in just this muddy mess of all these, like, characters. I think there's, like, five or six characters in here. And the film, like, once she, like, gets into this group, she just gets lost in the sauce. And it, it, I think the film, uh, it doesn't, it kind of loses focus. And when I feel like Maybe they should have lessened the amount of characters that, that are in this or just really focus on one or two characters in a more substantive way. And, you know, people are going to say arguably it does. But the thing is, like I said, um, I think it kind of gets lost and they don't really get fleshed out as much as, as I would want them to. Because at the end of the day, I didn't really care about these characters and therefore I didn't really care about anything that really happened in this film. And even though a lot of the horror suspense is built up really well and a lot of the horror violence um, is really well done in the sense that you believe all the gore that happens, you just, like for me, I just didn't care because I didn't like the setup. I didn't like these characters. They all felt like lazy cliches and it was just really hard for me to get into this film. And maybe if this film really chose like a hard identity, like, if it just went full, like, okay, this is just a dumb, fun, B-grade film that has really good suspense and really good horror action violence type of stuff, then, like, maybe I would have enjoyed it more. But I think this film really tries to take itself seriously from start to finish, and that's where I think it kind of falls flat, because the whole setup and all these characters you just can't really take seriously. So I think, like, that was a mistake of the film, in my opinion. There are aspects of this film where you also kind of have to suspend your disbelief because, at least for me, because there are there are moments in this film where, like, a character explains, like, the nature of these creatures in the cave and she basically says, like, these, these creatures have essentially evolved perfectly for their environment in terms of being able to navigate and hunt. And, you know, if that's the case, like, how do any of these characters have any shot at surviving at all? But yet they manage to kill off a decent amount of them and also, like, they're, they're blind, and it's like, how, how exactly are they blind if they've adapted perfectly to the darkness? It just didn't 
seem like really believable. And again, like I get it, it's like a sci, it's almost kind of sci-fi ish too. But I get it. It's like you know, it's a movie. These creatures aren't real. But if I'm going by the logic that they evolved perfectly in their environment, which is what which one of the characters established, then you would think that you know, if they have eyeballs, which they do have eyeballs, that those eyes are now equipped to really see in the dark in a really like efficient way. But instead, they're blind. And it just seems like if they're blind, then how come they really even have eyeballs? And I don't know, like, for me, I found that kind of frustrating. And sure, maybe it's a little bit too nitpicky, and perhaps you're right, but I'd be lying to you if I said, like, it didn't bother me when I was watching it. I just felt like it didn't make a whole lot of sense. But like I said, if you're just going into this, and you just want to see a bunch of characters get killed off, and not really give a shit about any of them, but you just want to see a film uh, portray, like, a bunch of cave-dwelling monsters kill a bunch of people then, you know, I think that you can enjoy this film for sure. But, you know, for me, like, I guess I expected to be more invested in what was happening, and unfortunately I wasn't. Even though, like I said, a lot of the horror build-up and suspense was really well done, and um, this, except for a bunch of fake jump scares, there was this movie had a lot of fake jump scares, especially in the beginning, but even, like, in the second act, there's a lot of fake jump scares where I was like, okay, oh my god, like, maybe one, maybe two, but, like, Jeez, there was like at least four or five fake jump scares in this movie, and I was really hoping they would just give it a rest, but they did. They just kept going with it. Either way, I'm, I'm getting off the rails, but this film does have something to offer in terms of it being really well lit. Uh, the camera work overall is pretty solid, especially for a low-lit environment. Um, you know, the horror action is well done. A lot of the prop work is really well done, you know, in terms of the special effects. Uh, the way, you know, the bloody violence is done is really believable, but unfortunately, I just really couldn't care about anything that's in this film. So I'm going to give The Descent a 5 out of 10. I know it's kind of a low grade, especially considering that a lot of people have really, really enjoyed this film. But um, for me personally, it just really wasn't my cup of tea. But remember, I am going to have a review for the original 1973, The Wicker Man. That review will be out tomorrow night, so stay tuned for that. But anyways, if you really dug this video and enjoyed what I had to say about The Descent, Please give it a like, and if you didn't, then leave a comment, and let's have an insightful debate and discussion in the comment section. I would highly look forward to that. Either way, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed what I had to say, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.